15 levels of writing functions in Python. Level 1, basic function with zero arguments. So here, let's define a function. So let's just call it hello. And here we print hello world. So in our function definition, notice that our function does not take in any parameters. So if we call this function, it does not take in any arguments, which makes it very simple. But this function will only do one uncustomizable thing. Level 2, functions that take in one argument. So let's create a function called add 10, which takes in one number and returns the sum of n plus 10. So here we can see that our function only takes in one argument. So here's how we can call it at 10, so 7. And if we print x, we'll get 17. Level 3, functions that take in two or more arguments. So let's define a function called add, and it takes in two numbers, a, b, and it returns the sum of these two numbers. So here we can see that our function takes in two arguments, and therefore we must take note when we call our function. So x is equals to add, let's say 4 and 5, and if we print x, we will get 9. Next, let's write a function that takes in three arguments. It takes in x, y, and z. So let's say it returns the average of x, y, and z. Divide by 3. Here we can see that our function takes in three arguments, and so we must pass in three arguments to it when we call it. Let's take the average of 1, 2, and 3. And if we run this, we will get 2.0. Level 4, functions with default or optional parameters. So let's define a grid function. So it takes in a name and it takes in an optional parameter, greeting. So greeting is hello. So print greeting and name. So here we have to pass in name, but it is optional to pass in greeting. So let's take a look at what happens if we just pass in name. So greet com. So notice that if we do not pass in greeting, greeting will take the default value hello. However, if we decide to pass in a greeting, let's say greeting is high, greeting will no longer take the default value hello. Instead, greeting will be high. Level 5, lambda functions. So let's define a simple function first. Define at 10. So it takes in a number and it just adds 10 to that number. So next, we are going to write a lambda function that is exactly the same as this normal function. So at 10 is equals to lambda x colon x plus 10. So what's happening here is that the stuff that happens before the colon is the input of the function, while the stuff that happens after the colon is the return value of the function. Next, let's write a function that takes in three arguments. Define at a, b, c. So I'm just going to return a plus b plus c. So the lambda equivalent would be this. At is equals to lambda a, b, c colon a plus b plus c. So once again, the input of the function will be equal to the stuff that happens before the colon, while the return value of the function will be the stuff that happens after the colon. So some advantages of lambda functions is that it can be written in one line of code, it can be anonymous, and we do not need to give it a name if we do not want to. For example, we can choose not even to assign this to add, and lambda functions are easy to use in higher order functions, which are essentially functions that take in other functions. Level 6, recursive functions. So recursive functions are essentially functions that call themselves. So for example, I want to write a function that finds the factorial of a number. The factorial of 5 is equals to 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. So I'm going to define factorial and it takes in an n. If n is equals to 1, I'm going to return 1. So this is the base case. Else, we return n times factorial n minus 1. So if we print factorial 5, 6, and 7, we will get their respective factorials. So this function is a recursive function because it calls itself. So the factorial here is the same as the factorial here. Level 7, methods. So methods are essentially functions, but they exist inside classes. So I'm just going to create a simple class called doc, class doc. So define buck self and print oof. So I'm going to first create a doc. And I'm going to call the docs bug method. So notice that when we define a method, we have this self parameter here. But when we call it, we do not pass in anything here. This is because self refers to the doc object itself, which is this doc object here. Level 8, magic methods. So magic methods are essentially special methods with special behavior. So let's create a doc class and define init. 
So init here is a magic method and usually magic methods will begin with two underscore and also end with two underscores. So this init method will define how our object is initialized. For example, I want you to take in a name and an h and self name is equal to name, self h is equal to h. So this method will define how our dog object is initialized. So for example, let's say we create a dog object and because of the init magic method, we now have to pass in a name and an h. So let's say Rocky and 4. So right now, if we print dog, we will get some gibberish. We'll get this. Next, another notable magic method is the stir magic method. So it takes in a self and must return a string. This will define what we get when we convert an object to a string. So return f string self name and self h. So right now, when we print dog, we will get this instead. So this behavior is actually defined in the stir method. So there are many, many other magic methods other than these two, but let's not cover this here. Level 9, functions with asterisk arcs. So this asterisk arcs, when used as an argument, allows our function to take in any number of positional arguments. So for example, let's just create a test and it takes in arcs. So here I'm just going to print arcs. So let's say we call our function without passing in any arguments. Our arcs will simply be an empty tuple. However, if we choose to pass in one argument, we will get a tuple of length 1. And if we choose to pass in multiple arguments, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we will get a tuple of length 5. So notice that whatever we pass into the function will all be caught inside asterisk arcs. So let's use another example called test 2. So I'm going to take in a, b, and then arcs. So I'm going to print arcs equals. So essentially, this means that test 2 will need to take in at least two arguments. So it has to take in at least a and at least b. But whatever happens afterwards will all be caught inside arcs. So for example, test 2, 1 and 2, we will get a is 1, b is 2, and arcs is equals to nothing. However, if we add more stuff behind, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, a is equals to 1, b is equals to 2, and arcs is equals to everything else that happens after 2. So this way, our functions can take in any number of positional arguments. Level 10, functions with double asterisk quarks. So this quarks with a double asterisk will actually enable our function to take in any number of keyboard arguments. So let's define a function test, and let's take in a, b, and quarks. So let's print f string. So in this function, we must pass in a and b, but every other keyword argument will be caught in quarks. So for example, test a equals to 1, b equals to 2, c equals to 3, and d equals to 4. So here, a will be caught by a here, b will be caught by b here, while c and d will be caught by quarks. So here, a is equals to 1, and b is equals to 2, while quarks is actually a dictionary that contains c and d inside. Level 11, functions with arcs and quarks. So with a combination of arcs and quarks, our function can take in any number of positional arguments and any number of keyword arguments. For example, let's define test. So it takes in arcs and quarks. So I'm just going to print quarks equals so test 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. A equals to apple. B equals to pear. So if we run this, we will get arcs is equals to a tuple containing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are positional arguments, while quarks is a dictionary that contains a and b. So one thing to note when writing our function is that all our keyword arguments must come after our positional arguments. Level 12, generator functions. So let's just define a normal function. So test, return 1, return 2, return 3. So in a normal function, when we use the return statement, nothing else will happen afterwards, which means that return 2 and return 3 will never happen. However, in generator functions, we use yield instead of return. So let's create a test to yield tree. So when the yield keyword runs, it will not stop the entire function. Instead, it will allow the function to move on to the next yield keyword. So if we run test to, we will get one, two, three. Level 13, higher order functions. So a higher order function is a function that either takes in another function as an input argument or return another function as an output, or it could be both. So to illustrate, let's first write a normal function. So define at 10. So this takes in a number and returns the number plus 10. So next, we are going to write our higher order function. So define, apply. So we want this function to take in another function. So let's call it func. And we have a number. So return func x. So let's call this higher order function now. 
So we print apply. So here, because it takes in another function, we have to pass in a function here. So let's pass in add 10 and then it takes in x. So let's just add a number, let's say 3. So here, function will be equals to add 10 and x will be equals to 3. And because add 10 will be applied to 3, we will get 13. And here we have it, we have 13. Level 14, decorator functions. So decorators are actually a special type of higher order function that takes in a function and returns another function. We usually use decorators to modify another function's behavior without actually changing the source code inside that function. So let's write a normal function first. Define greet and greet name. So I'm just going to return hello name. So next, I want to write a decorator that will add an exclamation mark behind the return value of this function. So add, add, exclamation. So this is actually our decorator. But we have yet to define our decorator function, so let's do that now. So define add exclamation. So it takes in your function. So define wrapper. So because grid takes in a name, we can make it take in a name here. So return your function name plus exclamation mark. And we return wrapper here. So at this point, we have written our decorator function and we have decorated our grid function. So if we call our grid function now, print grid team, we will get hello team with an additional exclamation mark. And this exclamation mark is due to our decorator here. So one thing to note is that this syntax is actually the same as this syntax. Grid is equals to add exclamation grid. Level 15, advanced decorator functions. So similarly, let's create a grid function, define grid name turn hello name so next we want to decorate this function by adding stuff behind the return value so let's say add symbol and we want to add a exclamation mark so this is our decorator but we haven't created our decorator so let's do that now so notice that when we decorate stuff now we have this additional open and close bracket which means that this add symbol is actually returning our decorator so let's do that so define add symbol so it takes in a symbol, which is whatever symbol we pass in here. So define wrapper1. So wrapper1 takes in your function. And wrapper2 takes in your name. So return your function and takes in name plus symbol. And here we return wrapper2. And here we return wrapper1. So let's say if we print greet, Tom, we will get hello Tom with an additional exclamation mark. However, if we change this to a question mark, we will get hello Tom with a question mark. And there we have it, 15 levels of writing Python functions.